Hi, this is Chris. Welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to embed links to websites, files and multimedia from Active Inspire, the interactive whiteboard software from Promethean. One of the big advantages of doing this is that it means that all of your resources are at your fingertips during your lessons, so you no longer have to come out of your application to browse a website or to load up another document. You simply click the link in your flip chart file and up it pops. Let's start by having a look at how we can link to websites. To do this, I click on the Insert menu, select Link, and choose Website. The next step is to enter the website I'd like to link to. I could type this in directly, but since I've already copied it to the memory, I'm simply going to right-click in the text box and choose Paste. The next step is to click OK. As you can see, we've now got a link on our page, and clicking this will automatically load that web page. Since I inserted this as a text link, Active Inspire has automatically inserted the name of the web address as the text that becomes my button. Now this is fine with short web addresses, but as you can see when you have a really long web address it actually takes up quite a lot of space on the screen and could become a distraction to children during lessons. Let's have a look at some of the other options we've got for how we can insert web pages. Again I'm going to go to the Insert menu, select Link and choose Website. I'll right click and paste my web address in and then this time I'm going to add my link as an image icon. What this will do is it will place a button on the screen which I can position wherever I'd like. Again, clicking the button will automatically load the web page. I far prefer this to the text, so I'm going to put the text link in the bin and move my button to the bottom right hand corner of my flip chart page, so it's out of the way. The vast majority of the time I use this method for linking to websites, but there is another method we can use and that's to use an existing object on my screen. The benefit of this is that it means we don't have to add extra buttons. We can simply use some text or an image that we already have on our screen as part of our lesson and we simply click on that and it opens the website. I'm going to show you how we can do this by creating my own button. I'll select the text tool and type in www. I'm then going to choose a suitable border which I'll draw over the top of my text. Then of course I need to place that behind my writing. I do this by right clicking on the border, selecting reorder and then to bottom layer. This will send the orange background behind the writing. The final stage is to link these together to create a single object. This will allow me to easily place my button wherever I'd like on the screen. To do this, I simply click and drag around the border and the text, and then select the link button here. I can now insert a link to a website using this button as my link. To do this, I'll go to the Insert menu, select Link and Website. I'll paste my web address in in the usual way, and then this time I'm going to select Existing Object. This will allow me to select anything on my page and make this the button to the website. To select which object I'd like to use, I simply click this button and then go through the different objects available to me. It might not be obvious at first which one is which, so clicking on each one in turn and looking at the preview will help you select the correct object. Once you've found the object you'd like to use, click OK and then click OK again. As you can see, my simple button has now become an action object. You can see this because when I move the mouse over it, I get the action object arrow, showing that if I click on it, something's going to happen. And as you can see, when I click on it, my web page loads. I can now reposition my button by clicking and dragging on it and placing it wherever I'd like on my page. So there we go, that's how we can link to web pages. Let's have a look now at how we can link to files. To get started, I'm going to click on Insert, Link and File. We're then presented with a standard file chooser. From here we can select any type of file we'd like to link to. I'm going to start by selecting this sound file called Thunder, and then I'll click on Open. The window that appears allows me to make some changes to how my file is going to be linked and how I'm going to store it. We've already looked at different ways of linking to websites, and the same applies here. I'm going to link to it as an image icon. Let's have a look at how the file can be stored. As you can see I've got three options here, but I tend to always look at the first two. By selecting Store File Externally, all I'm really storing is a link to the original file. If the original file moves or is deleted for some reason, then my link is broken and the button won't work. I always choose to store file in Flipchart. What this means is that the actual file is embedded as part of my Flipchart. This does increase the Flipchart file sizes, but it means that I'm guaranteed that my link will always work. It also means that I can more easily share my Flipchart files with other teachers without having to worry about also sharing all of the resources that I've embedded within it. For this reason, I always choose to store the file in the Flipchart. So I'm going to select that now and then click on OK. As you can see, we now have a button on the page, which I'm going to click and drag and place into the bottom right hand corner. And then clicking the button will load my file. 
I've got all the controls that you'd expect here, including a play and pause, a volume control, and a time slider to allow me to jump to a particular position in my sound file. So that's how we can insert links to sound files. Let's have a look now at inserting links to video. Again, I'll click on Insert, select Link, and choose File. This time I'm going to select the Piano Movie and press Open. From the window that appears I can choose how to link to my file and how to embed it. This time I'm going to select Placeholder. This is a special type of link that we can use for video or we can use for flash objects, which I'll talk about in a second. By selecting placeholder it actually means that I can play my video directly from my flip chart page without having to open another program like Windows Media Player. So I'm going to select placeholder, select to store my file in my flip chart and then press OK. As you can see we now have a clickable region and by clicking on this my video starts to play directly on my flip chart. Clicking on the video again will stop it and then I can resize it by clicking and dragging on the button in the bottom right hand corner. To restart my video, I simply click on play. As was the case with the sound player, we've got all the usual controls here, including a volume slider, a time slider allowing me to jump to a particular place in the video, and a play, pause and stop button. Let's have a look at the final button here. This actually allows me to change the placeholder image. This is the image that displays on my flip chart page before my video starts to play. By default it's a standard movie file icon which doesn't really mean a great deal to the children. So by clicking this at a particular point in your video you can actually take a snapshot and make this the placeholder image. So I'm going to do that now and then go to the previous page and then back to this page as if it was the first time I'd arrived at it in the lesson. As you can see we now have the placeholder image and by clicking on it my movie starts to play. I'm going to stop my movie by clicking on it and then resizing it by clicking and dragging on the button in the bottom right hand corner. I'm then going to position the video in the top left hand corner so it's ready to use as part of a lesson. What I'm going to do is show you how to use the video snapshot tool to actually take still frame photographs of the video as it plays. This is done with this button here. All we do is click it when we come to a frame we'd like to take a picture of. This is an excellent way of summarising movies with the children during the lesson. Simply ask a child to come to the board and click on the camera icon every time they feel the mood of the video changes. A snapshot will be created and placed on the page and it can then be dragged into position. As this is done throughout the movie, effectively a storyboard is created which can be used to discuss the mood of the film or any key points that have arisen. The flip chart page could then be printed to act as an aid memoir for the children as they do their independent work. So that's how we can work with video in Active Inspire. The final type of file we're going to insert is a flash object, often referred to as an SWF file. Again, I'm going to click on the insert menu, select link, and then file. I then need to select my flash file from my file browser and click open. As was the case with the video file, I'm going to add this link as a placeholder as I actually want my flash file to be embedded on my page. And as always, I'm going to select to store the file as part of my flip chart. As you can see when I click OK, my flash object is inserted on my page. The flash object is now active, which means any of the buttons that are part of the flash file are active on my flip chart. This can make it difficult to drag the object around your page or to resize it, as when you click on the object thinking you're going to drag it around, you actually end up clicking on one of the flash object buttons. The way around this is to click and drag from just outside the object onto the object. This will select it, allowing you to drag it around your page or to resize it in the normal way. To use the buttons on the flash object again, you need to click outside of the flash object to deselect it, and then you can use it in the normal way. So there we are, that's how we can insert flash objects or SWF files directly into our Active Inspire flip charts. And that concludes this video on how we can link to websites and insert links to various multimedia into our Active Inspire files. I find that by doing this it's a great way of increasing the pace of my lesson, as it means there's no chance of me having to fumble around for a file or try and find a particular website. I simply click the link and it appears on my screen. Thanks very much for watching.